Hey guys, and welcome to another Clash of Clans video. Today is another installment of the Legend League base series. Today is a base, uh, it's very hard to sort of pin down who exactly built a base when you're not the one who built it, uh, but I believe that this base is built by Jayoff, uh, one of the clans that is going to Poland at the end of the month. Uh, so good, best of luck to those guys. And uh, this is one of their bases that I've seen in Legend League. I've seen a couple of people use it, so I'm not too terrified about uh, spreading it around a little bit because it's getting a little bit old, to be honest, but it still works. Uh, just still works just below the top of the, the top like thousand or so. I've used it for three for four days now, still hasn't tripled, uh, and it's basically against Yeti Smash attacks. Uh, Yeti Smash is the most important or most popular army in Legend League right now. At least in the uh, lower rankings of Legend League, uh, right behind the uh, top thousand or so. So the basic idea with this design is that it's a little bit weird. And it's a little bit awkward to have a uh, Yeti Smash army go through it because it's not like a rectangle. It's not a it's not a straight up uh, rectangular or square base or a straight up anti three base. It is a strange base uh, layout. And it has the two Inferno Tower compartments at the top and at the bottom. Those are the very most important compartments. Because at the bottom is where the Eagle is, and it's very tempting to start there. But sometimes your troops will wrap around by the other Inferno Tower and wrap around to the scatter shots and then just die there. Uh, uh, with the help of the double giant bombs. And the other way is to go in from like... And, and the other... The compartment at the top... Is also a single inferno, so it'll take out anything that's not inside the compartment but reachable by the inferno. The inferno will just take that out, especially if it's a big, uh, big hit point unit. And the same thing at the bottom. So you don't want to leave those alone, but you're kind of forced to. So especially if you don't have like a yeti blimp to finish off one of those compartments, but you have to enter at one of those compartments in that way and with a yeti smash you probably want to enter from this from the scattershot area instead so here's a glimpse at my uh defense log and we're for, for, first we're going to watch the defense by uh or from marinol uh after this we're going to have two yeti smashes and a hybrid attack so keep watching to see those this is a very strange kind of strange attack it is a bat, uh, drag bat, and this is one of his favorite attacks, actually. He really likes the air raids, and, uh, usually Lalo is the first on the list, but he also likes drag bat quite a bit. Because it's easy to do if you find a base that, it, it's easy to do if you find a base that it worked on, but those are kind of rare in the days of scatter shots, but... He seems to think it works quite well in Legend League. So he uses the Queen at the bottom to take care of the side, uh, take care of the a uh, couple of defenses, and then the Royal Champion to take the uh, Eagle Artillery out. So now the base is left with two Infernos and uh, no Eagle Artillery, just the Scatter Shots and the Infernos in the Town Hall. But quite a bit of the base is actually still uh, still up. Like, there's not really an easy funnel for these dragons to get through the entire base. And also the sweepers are pointing up, so that's a little bit of a incentive to attack from the side, like he is right now. The problem he's going to face eventually is that Inferno Tower at the top. A lot of these bases these days have single Infernos, and it's for the ex this exact reason. That you're using mostly large troops, like yetis, or dragons, or e-drags. Um, and it's very rare, with the exception of hybrid, to use any troops that are small, like hogs or miners are. But with the exception of hybrid, it's, it's very common to use these giant troops like dragons. And that's why single infernos are quite powerful. And even with those hybrid attacks where you have tiny troops, you're still using heroes, so heroes can get easily targeted by those Infernos. Now notice the way these 
wizard towers are placed. They are spaced diagonal, diagonally two tiles apart, which means that a free spell cannot attack or cannot freeze both inferno, both, both wizard towers at the same time. So it, it's very, very close, but you actually can't do it. Yeah. Very close, but it's, it's just impossible to do. There are a couple of air traps in that area too, so it's kind of rough for these dragons. So they're not quite going to be able to get through the entire base on their own. 86%, very good. And quite good for the Legend League. Uh, quite good for, I think this is a, like, 5400 area. So, 86% will probably keep you going up. Especially if that's, like, your average attack. And you still get triples on top of it. But not quite a triple in that case. Next we have a Yeti Smash with the Warden Walk. And as I said earlier, the, uh, the idea is to go in from one of the top sides and get the scatter shot on the side as well and with the quad quake that makes it quite good because you can open up the inferno tower compartment and the scatter shot uses some hogs to support the taking out of the tesla farm at the top but almost everything goes inside so that's goal one accomplished for this attack the Warden ability was a little bit quick, so the Warden isn't going to help the the uh, Giga Tesla damage. But, it's kind of fine. The Blimp was placed a little bit strangely, so it's not going to be able to get the Inferno Tower and the Eagle as it should. But even with that, uh, getting the Inferno Tower and the Blimp, we would have been left with the Queen and the scatter shot left up, and that probably would have been too much for the rest of the uh, army to deal with. Because it went into the base fine. Everything went into the base, got to the town hall, but it just split across the two... It split across the two angles, so they went through the uh, the right side area and the center of the town, uh, center of the base but they weren't able to have one cohesive group throughout the base. So they couldn't quite get through the entire base on their own. Next up we have the hybrid army. So this attack comes pretty close, but it was the only attack that was actually, or the only attack against me in a couple of days that was hybrid. That's very interesting because hybrid is my favorite army at the moment as well. So let's see what he does. He finds the Tesla farm pretty early. It's good for him. Not gonna have to deal with that with the miners. So he's probably gonna wall break in and try to get this Inferno Tower. He does get the wall break. Let's see if the queen goes in. Yeah, so everything's going to plan. Even gets a very good freeze down on both the uh, expos as well. So he's going to be able to get the town hall with the queen charge. But what goes wrong? A couple of things that could go wrong here. Um, possible that the eagle is just too much. It's too far out of the way for the miners. Or the CC is out of the way and CC can't be pulled by the queen. CC for this base, by the way, is hound and witch. And it's also possible that, because he didn't get any scatter shots, that could be enough to change the end of the raid. It appears that... He dropped the king and the... Uh, siege barracks on opposite sides of the base. I'm not sure if that was intentional. I would hope not. Because the, the uh, siege barracks and the queen and the king uh, work very well together. Because the P.E.K.K.A. is just not enough tanking for the, all these wizards. And all these wizards are getting destroyed by this uh, Archer Tower. So he only has like six up left. When he's done. I guess he didn't identify a very good area for um, Yeti Blimping. 
So that's why he's got Yetis in the CC. All of the healers look like have been uh, destroyed by Seeking Air Mines. That's also an interesting part of the base. Is that it's very common to have all the Seeking Air Mines in the middle of the base these days in order to protect against healers switching from the Queen to the rest of the army and then healing up the army. Because they're very, very powerful units against the army. Or for the army, the healers are. So he's just left with a bunch of miners and he doesn't have any heal spells left. Just not quite enough to finish off the rest of the base. The scattershot and an expo and a double giant bomb between the air defense and the cannon. It's just not gonna be enough miners to take on attack on to take on the rest of the base. So quite good. 87%, but not enough to take down the base. And finally, we have a um, another Yeti smash, but this time with bowlers and witches. Interesting that he uses the rage spell there. Um, I'm not sure if that's entirely necessary, but maybe it is in order to take down the king. And now he has the queen walk, and that's going to take care of the CC. And he uses some wall breaks to take down the first layer of walls. And probably in an effort to uh, to form the funnel a, bit, a little bit better. So he's dealing with the CC. Uh, not very well. I mean, this witch is really giving him some trouble. I'm not sure if it took out two healers or just the one. But it does end up getting down the witch. So the queen is working and doesn't quite get out of range of the uh, single inferno, unfortunately. And now he starts the funnel with the king and the witch is on the left side. Down the middle he has some uh, bowlers and yetis. And he's going to drop the jump spell and the warden and I think the RC as well. Well, he may save that for the Inferno Tower or something. So he's going after the Town Hall in this scenario. But there are a couple of uh, more interesting buildings on the inside of the base by the CC. So that stops him a little bit from getting the Town Hall. And now the troops are like ringing around a rose on the Rosie, even though it's not a ring base. They're still getting distracted by some defenses, and they're not going to be able to take down the Town Hall. So, that's unfortunate for him, but it's going to be a 50-something percent one-star. So, well, that's unfortunate for him, but this is a pretty good base for uh, above, like, 5200-ish. So, it's an anti-three-star base for pushing, and it's a very strange layout compared to anti-three war bases, but that's sort of how it is up here. So, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. I've been Raised Gaming, and I'm out.